Hi, my name is Sarah Waldner, and I'm a senior product manager for the Monitor Stage at GitLab. I lead the health group, and today I'm going to be walking us through our product category, Incident Management. So Incident Management was added to GitLab last year. The product category is currently uh, at the viable maturity level. And this set of features serves users who are responsible for monitoring and maintaining the availability and reliability of IT services. They would leverage this set of features to respond to IT incidents that are triggered when there are outages or lapses in the availability or reliability of those services that they are responsible for. So today, this walkthrough is gonna cover the configuration of alerts, setting up issue templates to be used for the auto generation of incidents, enabling auto issue creation, embedding metrics in those, linked Zoom calls, and then collaboration via Slack commands in Slack. As we go through this walkthrough, I'll be pausing in between to take notes on improvements or bugs or feature ideas that I have that come up. So let's get started. So this is a demo project that I have set up for the monitor stage. And we're gonna go check out the metrics dashboard. So what I'm looking at here is a set of default Nginx metrics uh, that are automatically added to a project when you deploy Ingress or Prometheus to a cluster that you're running your applications on. So you'll get a set of Nginx um, Ingress metrics as well as um, system metrics for Kubernetes that automatically come out of the box. So for the purposes of this demo, I've gone ahead and set an alert on my memory usage um, across my cluster. So I did that by going to the drop down in the upper right hand corner here, clicking alerts, and then setting it here. So selecting my query and the value that I want um, to set the threshold at. If I wanted to remove this alert, I'd also have to, hmm, that's a good idea to put, so this is a little bit challenging to delete this. I have to select the one and then click delete. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a note on that. All right, moving on. So you can see as a visual here on the chart, um, it shows you my threshold and then it shows you the average value here so it's clearly above and we've indicated that in the red color uh, so i had an issue that was automatically generated for this let's go take a look at that and there's a couple different parts to this uh incident that i'm going to walk through in a minute i just wanted to show the incident and the way that you would get issues to create automatically on alerts that you're receiving from Prometheus is by navigating to settings, operations, and then the incidents section. So I've got a really simple enable disable checkbox here. Um, when I set up alerts from the metrics dashboard, which I can do for instances of Prometheus that are deployed to GitLab managed clusters, or I can also integrate external instances of Prometheus. I can select to create GitLab issues automatically for each alert triggered. I also have the option of customizing what that incident looks like. So in this project, I've created an issue template called incident. These are saved in the repository. So they're very easy to add. Um, same as you add issue templates for any other project. I've named this one incident for ease of identifying it for purposes of incident management. And within it, I've added a couple different sections that are important to my team when we're firefighting. I've embedded a metrics chart, um, a section where I'm gonna populate the timeline. And then I've also added uh, the Zoom call that we always have open for firefighting. I've indicated the Slack channel where this project is integrated with. 
And then I've used uh, quick actions to do things for auto assignment and then auto labeling. This is super useful for automating a lot of those manual tasks that you might have to do when an incident's created and you wanna save those, add them to the issue template and have that done for you so you don't have to do anything after it's paged. So when we go back to look at the parts of the issue for the alert that was triggered, I've got the environment, um, the environment in which the system that triggered the alert lives, name of the metric, and then the threshold that triggered it. So it was greater than 0.2 gigabytes for five minutes. And anything over that, I wanted to receive an alert on. So when the alert triggered, it automatically created this incident. And I have this section at the top, which is the summary, which is auto a set of auto-populated fields that gives me more information, um, that gives me information that comes from the alert payload. So there's actually five different fields that could show up here, but we only surface those um, that have values in the alert payload. Below the alert details is gonna be the rest of the custom issue template that we just looked at. So the embedded metrics is a link that I've generated from the metrics dashboard. So I can do that, let's go look at that. I can either copy paste the link to the entire metrics dashboard into a markdown field, or I can generate links to charts for specific charts if I only want to show that chart in the issue. Both of those things are really helpful in the initial triage process when you're trying to figure out um, what's happened, why it was triggered. Having that visual immediately available shortens your time to action. So below that, uh, I've got my standing Zoom meeting. Um, Oh. oh, that's because I have to add it via quick action. I remember how to do this. So if you're, if I was paged and I started an initial investigation, I realized it's gonna take more people than I to fix this and I started the Zoom meeting, I've got a really easy way to link this to the incident. I'm gonna get a system action that that was successful and oh i'm gonna need to refresh the page there so that's another that doesn't make a lot of sense so i'm gonna say remove requirement to refresh incident to see linked zoom meeting that's not a great experience if you're trying to move quickly and you've added something and you don't see it immediately so now with this button, anyone else that I've sent this to, whether it's in Slack or anyone else who's been paged, has quick access to that conference bridge where we can then synchronously collaborate. A couple other pieces uh, to sign to me. I did that with a quick action in the issue template. I've got a couple of labels that were added automatically. The incident label gets added for all issues that are created for triggered alerts. Um, that doesn't need to be configured in the issue template. This makes it easy to have an issue board that you're using to triage, and so you can just filter that for issues with a label incident and always have access to those. And then I've added a label for uh, the service that this that's running in this GitLab project. Um, so if I've got some sort of overview within a group, I can filter by those service labels as well. So another, um, way that people tend to collaborate during firefights uh, is via chat ops. We support slash commands both for Slack and Mattermost. Um, and I'm gonna demo, let's do slash commands. So this project is integrated with Slack. Uh, we've got two different services that allow you to either send things to Slack or change GitLab issues from Slack. So if I tag Clement and say, a 
commenting on this issue is going to surface this in the Slack channel that this project is integrated with. So before we go to Slack, I'll just show what that looks like. So I navigated from settings to integrations, going down through project services. Um, and we've got both a Slack application and Slack notifications. So within the Slack notification service, I've got this, once I've set up the web hooks for integration, I've got an entire list of actions that I can take to affect different things, um, either on issues or changes in the pipeline or delivery pipeline action. So these are all gonna show up in Slack. So here, for anything, um, any events that happen to an issue, created, update, or close, are gonna go to this Slack channel. So in Slack, we're looking at the Tanuki Ops Slack channel. Uh, I commented on that issue. And so you get the text from that in Slack. Okay. An example of affecting an issue from Slack, uh, let's go ahead and close this issue per se. So, One thing that we probably should improve is these slash commands are really long. So the amount of time that it takes me to type this out, I could probably just navigate to GitLab. So I can close, I've gone ahead and closed that from Slack and then I'll be able to see in GitLab. My issue was closed, and then there is a um, system message indicating that it was myself who closed that, because there is user mapping between um, Slack and GitLab. So one more item that I wanted to let's see. We want to improve the Slack slash command. Issues from Slack. Awesome. So that was an overview of incident management as it is today. Uh, as I said before, is it viable? Um, and we are we're looking to get this dog fooded by the internal infrastructure team as well as recruiting externally to build a special interest group for incident management uh, to help us determine um, improvements moving forward. Thank you.